Hi, hi. Okay, so I know it's been a minute since I posted a video on the Vintage Crochet channel, and it's been longer than a minute since I posted a video here. This summer has been kind of a roller coaster for us, and so I wanted to get on here and make a video and just sort of catch up with you and tell you everything that has been going on. I have been lacking in my duties to post on here, and I am sorry about that. So the summer started off wonderful. I had my birthday, I turned 44 and it was a fun day. And then as we got, I was, and I was working on the um, Vintage Crochet channel a lot. And then as the month went on, we ran into uh, a serious health scare here in my home on, the, on June 22nd and June 23rd. So in that 24 hour period, my son James, who's 22, suffered through five seizures in that 24-hour period, and he had, and we're talking the violent kind of seizures that that are terrifying, horrifying to watch. He's never had seizures before. We have no family history of seizures on my family, and as far as we know, not on his father's side of the family. Um, the thing is, I don't know that much about his father's side of the family, as that was one of those. You know, I'm 20 years old. This is kind of a fleeting relationship. Next thing you know, the guy is gone and I have a baby. <laughs> so I don't know a lot about his his biological father's side of the family. Um, but obviously, you know, we spent a lot of time in and out of the hospitals. And because he just kept having them, we had to c keep calling the ambulance. Now, now we know how to take care of him better at home when he's having a seizure without having to call an ambulance unless obviously he can't get out of it. Um, he is on seizure medication right now. We do have him set up with the neurologist. We had our first initial visit with the neurologist. Then we had our first visit where they began doing the, the brain scanning and stuff. And we have our next appointment for brain scans in October. Unfortunately, it's gonna be one of those three day tests where he has to wear the thing for like three days. But with such limited supply of that device, it's it's booked out until October. So we have to wait and we are on a dropout list. So if anyone drops out, we can get in that much earlier to get that device. It's It's been really, it's scary. You know, you don't understand what's happening. It's really scary. We have a much better understanding of what's happening. We just don't know why yet. So there is that, that's been ongoing. And then um, another health scare, I won't get into that one because that's not my place to talk about, but with a family member, that is really, really scary. And, uh, but again, I can't get into that one. And I just, I haven't been in, in the right place to film because I just, can't relax almost. Um, but I wanted to get on here and say hi and catch up with you guys. What I have been doing, as much as crochet has my whole heart and my whole world, ever since I figured out how to finally knit those two simple stitches, that's all I've been doing in my off time is knitting. Um, I am not replacing crochet with knitting because I have been crocheting too. But you know, whenever you learn how to do something new, it's so fun, you kind of dive into it a little bit. So, and I also want to learn how to do tatting. I really do. But I've been knitting and let me show you some of the things I've made. First off, I'll have to go get some of the things I made, but, but sitting right here next to me, I bought my first knit pattern because I don't want to just know how to knit from videos. I want to be able to learn from patterns. And so that's why the very first thing I did, as soon as I was able to do that knit stitch and that purl stitch, um, I jumped on to the crochet channel and I'm like, can I follow this 1917, you know, very simple stitch pattern? And I was really proud of myself for following it. And um, after I made that video, I wanted to understand better what, how to do like the garter stitch and stuff and how to recognize what a purl stitch is and what a knit stitch is. So I began watching some videos, zoomed in in slow motion, I'm like, Oh, that's what a purl stitch looks like. That's why when I was trying to do ribbing, it it looked like garter it looked like a garter stitch when I was trying to do ribbing. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? It's because I wasn't knitting on the knits and 
and purling on the pearls the right way because I didn't understand how to identify them, but now I do. And whenever I was able to finally figure that out right, I made a hat. <laughs> then I made another hat and then I made another hat. The last hat I made um, is a, it's just a knit stitch hat for the most part, but the brim part of the hat, I used that 1917 stitch pattern from that video, that sort of like brick looking pattern. And I'll have to show you that, but that's gonna require me to pause the video and go get it. But right here, um, this is the pattern that I bought. This is a girl who has a YouTube channel. So her patterns go along with her, uh, her videos. And so that was very helpful. Here's the sweater I'm making. I really hope that's coming out clear. I'll share a link if you knit, I'll share a link to her YouTube video and you really get a chance to see it and maybe follow along and make it. Uh, her pattern was extremely reasonably priced. I, I paid, I think, six or seven dollars for this pattern that she wrote out. And she does a phenomenal job. I don't want to give any of the pattern away, but she'll do like picture tutorials in there. And yeah, she's just wonderful. She has all the different sizes. I'm making a size large. It is an oversized sweater that, as you can see, it has wide sleeves, cuffs. And it has a wide, it doesn't have a fitted waist either. So I thought that would be so cute with a pair of leggings. Oh my goodness. And I bought the exact same yarn that she used because I fell in love with it watching her in the video. It looked so soft and so nice. And so I went ahead and bought the amount of yarn I need for the size large. It is Debbie Bliss. And I never used anything from Debbie Bliss before. Uh, but I get, I get the rave behind Debbie Bliss. And this is like, it feels like it's that raw, soft cotton. You know what I mean? Like almost like you can tear it, but I tried to tear it and it doesn't tear. It does have the tiniest bit of woven, um, but it's not woven. Let's see if I can show this off. It doesn't, it's almost braided, but it's loose. It's like loose. It's soft, almost like you want to be able to tear it, but you can't. Um, it is 47% cotton and 47% acrylic and 6% nylon. That nylon, there might be some kind of like micro thread thread in there somewhere. That might be that 6% nylon, but oh, I like this stuff. So I'm making my sweater using this Debbie Bliss. And here is my, my sweater thus far. It's all made in one piece too. You don't have to sew the front to the back. You don't have to do seams. It's all made in one piece besides the sleeves. The sleeves are added, um, but they're they're not sewn separate. They're not made separately and sewn on. The sleeves are added. You just start picking up your stitches here and work in a knit stitch all the way out to the sleeves. The sleeves are really neat looking stitch too. I look forward to playing with that. Uh, let's see, what is my front and back? This is my back. Okay, so here is the back, here is the front. And I think it's gonna be super cute and I'm super excited to get done with it. So this I've been playing with a lot during all this crisis we have going on in our country. It has been a welcome distraction. Crochet is always a welcome distraction for me, but I will admit because I now make YouTube videos, crochet feels a little more like work than it does relaxation and hobby like it used to. Um, so this feels more like hobby than crochet used to feel. So I have been doing this to unwind. I do knit the English throwing style. Yes, I know about the continental and the flicking. I tried both. My, that my brain doesn't agree with those. Not yet. In the future, I may evolve or not even evolve, but change to that. But for right now, I'm really enjoying that English throwing style. I find it rhythmic and relaxing and it makes me feel like I'm physically making something, not just doing this, but that I'm physically making something like a potter with a potter wheel. You know, I feel like I'm really involved with what I'm making whenever I'm doing that English throwing style. It just, I like it, I'm enjoying it. It's very rhythmic and relaxing for me. I'm gonna show you the hats I made. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm sorry if my camera is tilted in a funny angle. My camera stand, after nearly two years of using it, it's kind of falling apart a little bit. I need to get a new one. Okay, so my hats. So this was the first hat I made that I showed off on the Vintage channel, and I love this hat so much. And then this was the second hat I made with no puff. I made this one really big. I made this one for Justin. 
using um oh it's a uh it's a Bernat I can't or is it a lion brand it's a chunky yarn it's a wool woolies thick and quick woolies thick and quick so it's too big for me I made it for Justin um just a simple and I need to get better about how I know that there are techniques with knitting where you slowly knit your way up to the crown and it looks really nice and smooth I, I attempted to do that a little bit with this hat um but still not a huge success with it but this is that 1917 sort of brick style pattern that we played with and I wanted to make a hat using that and I, I used a Bernat Maker home decor yarn for this for this hat and I picked this kind I saw this I saw this at the thrift shop and I bought it it was in a bag with another ball of yarn which I have put away and I'm like oh my gosh that looks just like my sweater so I bought this sweater uh, the year that we had the big um, uh, monsoon come through here that knocked out the power for a week, and we had to stay in a hotel in Laughlin for a week. And uh, I bought this sweater, or Larry bought this sweater for me when we were staying in the hotel for the week in Laughlin, and look, it matches! And I love this color so much because I think it like brightens up my skin tone a little bit, so I'm very pasty, so anything that can help me look a little tanner is nice. And so these are the hats I've been making. And um, uh, somebody reached out to me. She has a yarn shop. She, she's, a knit, she's into knitting. And she's got an Etsy shop. And she's got a website where she sells knitting needles and, and her own hand-dyed yarns. And she reached out to me with a very generous gift she wants to send that she is sending. And she sent me some patterns for some more hats. So I'm going to be diving into those hats. And... Whenever I show off her her gift, whenever I you know, like do a, sort of a happy mail, so to speak, I am gonna leave links down below. And I'll leave a link to her shop, um, both of her shops, her website and her Etsy shop below this video so you can check out. She's got a very sassy shop, very sassy. I will tell you that much. Um, I love the, uh, the spunk and the attitude uh, nature of, the spunky attitude, I should say, nature of her shop. It's very fun. Um, so I will also leave links to her shop uh, below this video. Today she sent me, my goodness, half a dozen hat patterns. And I'm like, oh my, they're her own patterns. They're her own design. So I can't show them and I can't, I can't make them like on camera or anything like that. But I can certainly share her shop. So sweet. Um, so that's what I've been doing lately is, is some knitting behind the scenes. And uh, my son's health scare, like I'm terrified every day. Every day I'm, I'm going to hear that sound. The sound he made when he was having them is the most god-awful sound any mother could ever want to hear from their child. Uh, it, it sounded like something out of a horror movie. It sounded like a, a, a low, painful groan that seemed to never end all in one breath. And I think it's because the air was being squeezed out of his lungs while groaning. My goodness, um, he had, he mostly had his seizures when waking up, when, when it's early in the morning and he's gonna wake up. That's whenever they would hit. But he had one at seven in the, af in the evening in the bathroom of all places, the most terrifying place anyone can imagine. If it weren't for our shower curtain catching him like a hammock, I don't know what would have happened. He wasn't in the shower, he was just in the bathroom area. And we heard, all kinds of loud banging in there and we just broke in broke basically broke the door down and got him out of there and um we had to call the ambulance that time i i never i've seen seizures on tv you know but those are like acted seizures i've never seen one in real life before and it it's your it's when it's your own child it just i don't know something changes you, you just look at them so much more delicately than before um that's at least that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at James like he's a porcelain doll now. And I have been, my sleep schedule is completely out of whack because he has to take his medication every 12 hours. And since my boys have been out of high school, which now they're 21 and 22, so it's been a few years, um, I just sort of sleep whenever I want to and wake up whenever I want to. And, uh, but he's got to have his pill at 7 in the morning and 7 in the afternoon. So I have my alarm set for 6.55 a.m. and 6.55 p.m. every day. I made everybody set their alarm in this house. Everybody, everyone in this house has an alarm set for 6.55 twice a day. 
so nobody misses getting him his pill. His um, mental recovery has been okay. At first, the short-term memory loss was very intense. He would ask you, what are we doing four times in an hour? He didn't know why he had to take medication the first several days he got home. He had no idea wh why, he, why he went to the hospital. He didn't remember any of this. Um, he didn't know why he had medication. We reminded him and he's, oh, oh, sometimes I think he's saying, oh, just to be kind and say, oh, but he still didn't get it. You can just sort of tell. You see that, that look of um, in uncertainty and confusion on his face. And so he is having a bit of uh, cognitive issues still. It's been a month, exactly a month today. He's still suffering with some cognitive issues. Um, for example, he came in and just before I started filming, he came in from the garage because he had been hanging out with his brother a lot. And he got a drink, a little bit of soda, and then came in here to hand it to me. It, I didn't ask for it and I can't have soda. I, I, like for years now, because I've been diagnosed with diabetes since, 2013 I haven't drank soda for what is it 11 years but he came in here to hand it to me he goes oh oh I'm sorry I got distracted but he's been doing that a lot lately um so he is having some cognitive issues he's having some speech issues uh he looks really confused um at the beginning of the day when he first wakes up which is understandable and he looks really confused close to the end of the day. So those are his worst times of the day when he just wakes up and when he's just going to bed. So when he's really sleepy, uh, he gets really confused. I hope that this does, didn't five in 24 hours of the most violent seizures you've ever seen in your life. Uh, I might sound exaggerating, but he's my kid. So it's the most ex it's extreme seizures I've ever seen in my life. We're talking the kind where you're spitting all over yourself and you're in full shake. You're in full shake. I just hope that it didn't cause any permanent damage for him. I don't know. First steps first is to get him through the neurology appointments and get him fully diagnosed. I think the doctor said that they're going to definitely, you know, they're going to they're going to they're going to do a test that triggers a seizure basically to find out what it is. And I'm I am really not uh, comfortable with that at all. I get it that it's in a controlled environment, but I feel like his brain has been through enough and another seizure, you could, I just, but I understand that that's what has to be done in order to find out like an allergy test, you know, when they prick your back with 28 different things, I'm making up a number, um, to see which ones are you reactive to. And so they have to do that to him. They have to essentially trigger a seizure to find out why he's having seizures when he comes from a family with no medical history of seizures, he's 22 years old and never had a seizure his whole life. All of a sudden he has them one day, five, five in one day, five. He does not do drugs. He does not drink alcohol. He is such a straight laced kid. He's an introvert. He just likes to play with his technology. And yeah, he does have a CRT TV. We took it out of there. Um, of course, they're going to flash him and see if it's strobing and flashing that does it. But he's had CRT TVs before because he likes to collect he likes to collect the vintage gaming machines. So the original NES and the Segas and all that stuff. And he prefers to play with them on the intended TV that they were designed for. So the old CRT TVs, the kind that have a little ringing sound, you know? So, but he's been doing that for years and years and years and it's never triggered anything. Now I get that humans can change. What, what you weren't allergic to five years ago. So I grew up my whole life not being allergic to cats. When I was pregnant with my son, Justin, I suddenly became allergic to cats and I haven't shaken that allergy since. Uh, I used to hate grapefruit. My tastes have changed. I like grapefruit a little more. Well, I used to, as long as it's got some sugar on it. <laughs> and I prefer brown sugar and honey on grapefruit. That's the way, try it. Brown sugar and honey and nutmeg or pumpkin spice. Try a little pumpkin spice. I know it sounds weird, but it's good. Okay, um, so I, I get that human beings, we change as we get older, and it could be environmental, it could be diet, it could be vitamin, although we, he's had a number of blood tests. Not only did the neurologist run a whole full panel and then some of blood tests, but so did his regular doctor, and so did the emergency room doctors, both times we took him. And um, yeah, the, the first emergency room physician we, we took him to, would not say it was seizures, even though I said, I think he had a seizure. Now, I didn't see his first two seizures. We heard them and we came in whenever he was in the process of, of 
being unconscious, but trying to come back, but being unconscious. We didn't actually see the shaking, but we could see that he was covered in, in spit. Um, and I just, I instantly knew that first day, this kid had a seizure. He has had, he, he, that's what this was. So when the emergency room doctor came in, they said that other than his blood sugar being high, which he's not a diabetic, his blood sugar was spiked to the roof. His um, potassium was bottomed out to where they gave him potassium there in the emergency room and his white blood cell count was high. And I said, I'm wondering if he had a seizure and the emergency room doctor was like, well, actually those would be the markers, the blood work, that is what your blood work would look like if you had a seizure. Your sugar would be high, your potassium would be really, really low, and your uh, your white cell count would be really, really high. James had all those, but he, he said possible seizure on the discharge papers. And James had another one 12 hours later, so um, 7 a.m. And we called, we called the ambulance, they came and picked him up again, and yeah, he had, he, that was whenever I opened the bedroom door. I, we told him he can't lock his bedroom door anymore. We need to be able to have access. So his bedroom door was unlocked and I went in there when I heard that horrific groaning sound again, like the air being dramatically squeezed out of him. I immediately jumped up, ran into the bedroom and I saw him in the, in the throes of it, just shaking and just spitting everywhere. And oh my God. That is not something you ever want to see. Um, so that took me away from filming for a bit. Not only was it very traumatic for James and for everyone around him, um, it just took me out of the mood to film, to feel happy and jovial. I wasn't happy. I wasn't jovial. I was terrified. What all of a sudden caused this? What food in my house? What... Is it the laundry soap? Is it the TVs? Is it the games? What is, what is it? What's doing this? We don't know still. Um, but I wasn't in a mood to film. And then we got very bad news about uh, a very close family member. Um, it, nobody passed away, but it's such, such sad news. And so that, that really messed me up for about two days. I just don't like the way things are going right now. And, uh, I haven't felt like filming, but I did start to film day before yesterday. So I have an exciting video coming up and pattern that's gonna be available for you guys from the 70s again. I made a mystery pattern and I'm gonna make another mystery pattern today. And I just received today in the mail my Hooks and Needles subscription. So I'm gonna, uh, in one of my upcoming mystery videos. We're going to cut this open. I haven't opened it yet. I always wait to do that the day I make that video for you guys. So I'm going to cut this box open and I, I can't wait to see what kind of yarn we got there. Yarn is the best. Um, I can't wait to see the patterns that they're going to send this next time around. So there's that. And I am knitting and I am having fun knitting. I love it. Justin's hat. Yes, I like this one. This one here is going to match my sweater. So perfect. I just want it to get cold. And that's another thing I've been dealing with this summer. You know, I'm starting menopause. Fortunately, I haven't dealt with a lot of hot flashes yet this summer. But we are having a record high summer. Heat this high usually starts around the end of the first week of July here in this part of Arizona. Now, the part of Arizona I live in borders Death Valley, Death Valley being the hottest point in the United States, and it's the hottest point anywhere in the West, the Western Hemisphere. Um, so I live in essentially the hottest part of the world on this, on this side of the Atlantic, okay, and Pacific. And uh, the heat wave, we, we're hitting over 120 degrees every day for weeks, for like three weeks. Um, I would say right after my birthday. So the first week of June, which is really early. And the heat just stayed and it's still here. It's still here. It is, it is over 110 degrees. It's, it's nearing, it's basically about 115 degrees every single day. So I've been stuck indoors for two months besides going to the emergency room. I'm getting cabin fever. I'm absolutely crawling the walls. 
So I need to get out. I need to go out and have fun and do something. <laughs> um, tomorrow night, we are going to go to the casino. It will be our first family outing since James had his major health scare. But we've mostly felt comfortable keeping him at home because we feel like we're on shaky grounds with him. But it's been a month now. His medication has been in his system for a month, exactly one month as of tomorrow, the 23rd. And he is doing so good. Not one seizure, not nothing. So we're going to go out for a couple of hours tomorrow. We're going to go to the casino and just relax as a family and let loose a little bit. There's a restaurant in there we like to go to called Feathers. So we're going to go in there and have a little dinner. And um, James is our, uh, he's our lucky charm. When we go to the casino with James, uh, the one who suffered the seizures, he's the only one who wins, but he wins good. He's good. At, he likes to do the slot machine. He's good. So I look forward to bringing his spirits up tomorrow too. And seeing his spirits brought up will bring my spirits up. Um, and hopefully that snaps me out of my funk and gets me back to filming again. But I am going to film a little bit tonight. I need to. Um, we replenished some. We're, we are recycling our numbers. So we did add some new numbers to the bowl. Um, I just lately what I've been doing, because Justin hasn't been in the mood either, is I'll just go through and pick out some books. And I won't look in them, but I'll say, okay, here are 28 books. I want you to go through that and try to find me some patterns. So that's what we've been doing lately. He usually goes and picks out the books himself, but he's not really been in a mood. So I kind of do that a little bit. He still completely does everything else. He picks the patterns and does all that. But I've been just sort of grabbing the books. Um, okay, guys, I'm going to let this one end here. I just wanted to catch up with you. And I need to, uh, I need to, I need to just watch something and take my mind off of things and definitely not news i want to watch something happy like charlie brown i want to watch charlie brown thanksgiving special i wish it were the fall i was I, like i was telling larry i said i'll get out of this house you can take me back to the store when they're starting to put up their back to school and halloween stuff take me to the store then <laughs> okay guys i love you lots i will see you really soon and thanks for listening and always being there for me. Always being good friends. I'll see you guys really soon on the other channel. There won't be any more videos going up this month on that channel. Um, so look for videos in August, which isn't that far away. It's like eight days away. It's like a week away. Okay, guys, I love you lots. Bye.